So today is going to be a little bit different than normal. Today I've come out with Paul and we're challenging him to find some photos in the types of environments that he doesn't normally shoot in. Normally Paul does people and products or he does great big wide vista landscapes and I've brought him into the woods behind the house and see if he can find some shots. So I'm here with Paul. Yeah. And we are gonna take a little look around the woods. We've just come and stopped at the first bit. And he's gonna see if he can hunt out a photograph that he likes and we're, he's gonna walk us through it. So um, I'm just looking for interesting shapes, uh, just things that kind of catch my eye that I can kind of isolate for the, the rest of the environment, which is quite hard because everything's almost green. But, um, and it's not my usual kind of subjects, but I'm always up for a challenge and uh, it's just nice to and shoot something different. Got the Sigma SD Quattro H here with a 12 to 24, which is also unusual for me because I'm not really that used to ultra wide, so, so it's always good to experiment on it. Any photos? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen the size of this. I would like some photos for it, but um, quite expensive for the whole 150 millimeter setup and stuff like that, so I'll just have to day with it and get creative when it comes to that kind of stuff, I guess. All right, so I think he's found a shot. We were looking up there, we may go back up there. But why don't you tell us what you've seen and what you're doing? There's just uh, three little stones around there with the water running over them. So I was wanting to just um, try and isolate them, make the water all kind of milky smooth and see how it looks. So we're doing a long exposure? Yeah. And how long do you think you're going to go? Um, I'll, try for, I'll try for about four seconds here, that is. I don't want it to go too milky. So. And I'll use a CPL to cut some of the glare out and the water. That's the shot, so we'll... I don't know what we'll do. We'll just sit and watch him, I guess. Alright, so how's it look? Oh, you got really close up on them, haven't you? Yeah, I'm just trying to isolate them a bit. That's the thing, you don't know how the water's going to look when the long exposure until you take it. Yeah. Because with a short exposure, you can see through on these and, you, and you've got a polarizer on this. Yeah. So, you can see the... Polarizer work if I just press this wee dial. So yeah. I may actually make the better come around a wee bit and see if I can just see through it. So I'll do that shot with them and then I'll take it off and do one um, to put in the filter so you can see the difference between the long exposure and the shot. So I'm using um, the Format High Tech Firecrest filters, it's, um, it's a filter holding system with light shields, you put your ND filters in here or variable NDs and at the back it's got a CPL filter with a little gear um, and you can also, it's got a quick release as well so you can pop it on and off. Uh, the reason I went for this is because I mostly shoot, shoot with strobes. Um, and I didn't want any light leaking through the sides and that kind of thing and I wouldn't know that until after I fired the shot um, but I started using them for landscapes and things like that as well and the other addition I've got to the filters is a Manfrotto Zoom I think it is, X-U-M-E um, it's like a magnetic ring you fit one here and you fit one bring this over and you fit one onto your lens as well so you can just snap them on and off and save you having to screw things and stuff like that So. Uh, that's the filter system that I use, the weird looking one. <laughs> so I think we've shot about all that we can around here. Uh, we've got a couple of nice long exposures, a little bit of video. We're going to head further down the river where it's a bit more challenging. We're going to see if we can get across to the other side. All right, it's Flare City. I've no idea where we are. We've crossed over to the other side of the river. Ow. And the path has taken us up really high. The river's probably about an 80 foot drop off its edge, but we're hoping, we're just in a little side path, and we're hoping it takes us back down to the water. It's definitely going down somewhere, but exactly where, I have no idea. So we're gonna follow it and see where we end up.
So we've reached the river again, as you can see, and Paul's looking around trying to find some shots. Have you seen anything yet that you like? Uh, possibly for here, I think. This wee kind of rock, you know. Maybe rock here and then it What, well, this little one here? No, it's, uh, you can see this and it kind of curves down. Okay. So I might go for that. And are you going to shoot it from up here or are you going to get down low and... Oh, how are you going to do it? No, I think for here, but the, the camera tilted both. Right. Um, just taking in a little bit of the sky in the top corner. And you're not um, using an ND for this one? No, I think, I'll get, I think I'm going to set the tripod up with it. Yes, so, go tripod. Right. Cool. Uh, well, the first thing I'm doing is I'm trying to frame up the shot. And um, there's a nice kind of edge here at the water I'm trying to get in the bottom right of the frame. And curve it all the way up. So I've got the camera quite high up and angled. And this angle helps, again, for another reason with the focus. Um, you may likely have a lot of the foreground and the background in focus, whereas if I had the camera down lower, uh, a lot of the stuff in the front would be really out of focus because it's so close to the camera. Um, so I've got the composition I, I like, um, so now I'm just going to put some filters on um, to get the water all nice and smooth and a CPL to get rid of some of the reflections. So I'll just stick this on here. So this has got a 6 stop ND filter in it, a uh, CPL. And it just there's a wee dial here I can rotate, just to take the, the, the reflection from the water, that's good. I'm going to set the camera onto a timer, so I've got a 2 second timer here, and because it's quite dark down here and the sky's really bright, I'm going to switch the camera into super fine detail mode, where it takes 7 shots, uh, all different exposures, and combines them into one raw file. And, and tell me why your wife is going to hate this photo. Um, She's always moaning at me because I'm out doing landscapes in a portrait position. <laughs> so instead of in the landscape. But um, I, try and, I try and do both, but I, I, my preference is always kind of shot like this, which really annoys her. But um, she kind of have a brain. <laughs> These next few bits of footage are going to be hard. Oh boy, oh god. <laughs> if ever there was a video that I was going to fall, this was going to be it. Fortunately, it hasn't been me today. Oh, I love Paul. Right, Paul. Yeah, I'm good now. <laughs> a little bit. Um, well, after sliding about in all other place for about 15 minutes, is it? <laughs> um, ne ne next time someone tells you to wear hiking boots, are you, you going to listen? Yeah, I'm yeah. going to invest in a pair, I think. Um, 
So we came up here and there's all these miniature trees with moss growing around them, so I'm just using the 50 to 100. I'm about uh, 85 millimetre here and there's just one there in the distance. Um, so I'm just getting quite a tight crop on it. Uh, composition and just bring that up so you can see it. And well, now we're stomping it so no one else can get the shot, right? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Still trees. Um, it's actually really hard to walk around here and not stomp on stuff. You've got to be really, really careful. There are so many of these little things that one wrong step and I'm squashing them and I don't want to do that. Because they look really, really awesome. There's just tons of these little tree shoots just covered in moss. And they look brilliant. Yeah. But uh, I think... I think that's it for today. <laughs> I think Paul's had enough falling over, so we're going to head back home, get a coffee, and then I don't know what I'm going to do, but uh, for now, that's it, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>